Okay, I'm getting pretty lazy here with these recordings. <laughs> Sitting in my bathrobe in a chair and not very well prepared. But anyway, it's for a breviary that I kind of don't recommend. Uh, the monastic breviary, Matins. And according to the holy rule of St. Benedict, so that's what it looks like. And the reason I don't really recommend it is that I ordered their diurnal about six weeks ago, still haven't received it. Emailed the company twice, received no response. So this is uh, from the Society of the Sacred Cross. Um, and also you'll notice that I have uh, duct tape going on there. The binding, this is from that same company. The binding was coming off and I resorted to Gorilla Glue to uh, take care of the binding also. And the other thing is the, uh, the print. Um, that it's, you know, copied and kind of like, a, you know, inexpensive Bible paper. Kind of a, gl a little glossy. Doesn't bleed through a lot, but I do find that it's a, it's a, a bit hard on my eyes, especially because this Matin's office is long. Now, anyway, why am I bothering to show it to you then with all that negative publicity? Um, so, yeah, it said Society of the Sacred Hearts. All right. Yeah, because it's just the... Office of Matins, sometimes called uh, the Office of Readings. And it's a very long office. It's the big office. So you could well see yourself doing only this office because it's so long. Sometimes you'd be reading, you know, nine, maybe 12 uh, psalms a day. And so for your prayer through the psalms, you could use just this. Which also means that it's pretty simple in that it, uh, you just have one office all in this one book and yet it has the proper of saints. Uh, I mean, the, this, you know, it has the common of saints so that you are in touch with the saint days and it has the, uh, you know, you follow the calendar to know who the saint is for the day. So it has the proper of saints. So sometimes you use the proper of saints along with common of saints, and that's what you'll be praying for that day if you want to honor that saint. So the one coming up here is, uh, for example, uh, December 21st, St. Thomas the Apostle. That's where I'd be reading from. And, um, but otherwise, it has you in touch with the uh, seasons, all the seasons, of course. <clears throat> so you have your Psalter arranged for the week according to the rule of St. Benedict. And that's another nice thing. I mean, this is really true to the, the rule of St. Benedict. Now, so it's a more traditional Psalter, which is going to mean, you know, especially Old English, which maybe then you're not going to like. So I'll sample that you a little bit. And what else did I want to say by way of preface here? Of course it has its, uh, you know, what I said, the Psalter arranged for the week according to the rule of St. Benedict with the ordinary of the Divine Office. So it gives you an ordinary here. And so it lays it right out for you how you're going to pray this office. And so you, you know, it gives you the Our Father, Hail Mary, I believe. <clears throat> I mentioned in another podcast, by the way, um, you know, hopefully you are praying your rosary every day. And if you are, uh, you're saying, you know, that I have Father six times and the Hail Mary, you know, uh, that's uh, what, 53 times. And the Apostles' Creed, you know, at the beginning of the rosary. And so I actually let that in the Glory Bees, you know, six times. So actually, I figure I'm doing all that in the rosary, which is kind of like a micro-breviary, you know? So 
okay, I'm cutting the corner, I guess. Uh, don't tell my bishop. But, yeah, I, I don't actually say that then in the Matson's office because I'm already saying it in the rosary. So, all right, I'm embarrassed to call me lazy. <laughs> all right, uh, so then it, it gets you started, you know. Oh, God, make speed to save me. Oh, Lord, make haste to help me. And the glory be. And then you say three times, O oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. O oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. And you pray Psalm 3. So I'll give you a flavor of the translation. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise against me. Many one there be that say of my soul, There is no help for him and his God. But thou, O Lord, art my defender. Thou art my worship and the lifter up of my head. I did call upon the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. <clears throat> I laid me down and slept and rose up again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid for ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Up, Lord, and help me, O my God, for thou smitest all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. And there's the glory be. So that's uh, the only... Um, translation sample I'll give for you there and then it sets you on to you know the invitatories so depending on what day of the week it is well today is Saturday the Lord our God oh come let us worship and then it has to do the invitatory Psalm 95 or in a Protestant Bible that'd be called Psalm 94 <coughs> and so I won't, I won't sample it for you, but so you pop that in that antiphon to the invitatory in between each section of the invitatory, each paragraph. I've sampled that in other uh, videos. So then you're going to, so all that is laid out for you very simply right there. You're only praying one office, not a whole lot of flipping that way. So if all that page flipping bothers you in a bigger breviary, you know what? Just pray matins. Maybe you'll have better luck than I did. Uh, like I said, I ordered the diurnal. It's been six weeks. I still haven't received it. Emailed them twice. Didn't even get a response. So, or maybe there's a, a different matins breviary you'd find. But anyway, I could really see the advantage of just praying one office a day. Matins. Typically, well, traditionally prayed like around 3 a.m. <laughs> but... Uh, unless you're an insomniac, I suppose you pray it before you go to bed, or you could pray it uh, in the morning, because often it's prayed uh, just before lots. Um, so then we'd go to, today is Saturday, so I flipped over to Saturday, and I see that, uh, you know, we start off with a hymn then. Now you notice all that stuff is really traditional too, right? Having you pray Psalm 3. I mean, you know, older, I mean, newer morning prayer versions, uh, they're typically not going to have you praying Psalm 3, or, and then they make the invitatory just optional, which you probably don't do then either. And so this is a, a very traditional uh, breviary, which I, you might very well like. <coughs> With so many changes that have happened in the Catholic Church, you know, the last 50 years, you have to, still Christ Church, but you have to wonder, knowing it's been very badly infiltrated, I know that, I'm not naive, yet I do believe it is Christ Church. And so anyway, if you do go to the older versions of things, whether that's the Douay Reims version of the Bible, or, you know, an older version of Matins like this, uh, which didn't cut out a lot of stuff and doesn't have cheesy pictures in there and cheesy hymns from the 1970s. <laughs> um, 
and all the rest of it that goes along with modern updates. Uh, you have what's much more in line with, you know, the about 2,000 years of Catholic tradition without having so much uh, concern of, was this, was this person redesigning the liturgy or the breviary actually a Freemason? Like, good reason to think so? Uh, that, that doesn't inspire trust. <laughs> So, going back to an older version, I like, at first I never did like the Old English, you know? I like the, the RSV. And so, kind of got tired of the King James Version long ago. But, um, you know, so I didn't take to the Douay Reams either. But given the slant on things, it's like, okay. And plus I'm starting to, oh, there's a, a Shakespeare book up here. So I got into that because I was given that at the funeral of my son, Micah Philip, because that was his book that he had asked a friend for Christmas, and they gave it to him. So he was reading, he had read that, a lot of it, and so that inspired me to take the lead from my son and read Shakespeare. Well, anyway, in reading Shakespeare, it's like, okay, this is, you know, the gold standard of English language and literature. And so then I thought, well, so give the King James and the Douay Reims Old English, like this Old English breviary. Yeah, don't just gloss over that. That's got a lot to offer, right? Plus it slows you down. It's different. Makes you think through things more because it's different to you, perhaps. And that's a lot to be said for that, too. So don't just discount something that because it's Old English. That actually might be a, a good selling point. <laughs> so... I go to Saturday and I see that there's a hymn. I guess I should give you a taste of their hymn, <clears throat> since that's not scripture. O God of mercy, passing thought, who hast the world contrived and wrought in power, essential unity, in person, blessed trinity, <clears throat> do thou in love accept our lays or mingled penitence and praise and set our hearts from error free, more fully to reject in thee, more fully to rejoice in thee, our reins and hearts in pity heal, and with thy chastening fires anneal. Gird thou our loins, each passion quell, and every harmful lust expel. And as we now the hours of night with songs united put to flight, below with thine abundant hand, the gifts of our blessed fatherland. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost in thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. So definitely older English, and you saw me kind of struggling there a little bit to read. Um, so maybe that's not a problem for you, but for me, the, the copy on the glary page with a smaller print in a long office can kind of tire my eyes. So again, that's what I'm talking about. So then we get to Nocturne 1, and uh, gives you the antiphon. And so I'll just name them Psalm 102, <clears throat> Psalm 103, 104, which is a long one, has a division. And then 105, a long one, has a division. And then we come up to the absolution. So from the chains of our sins, may the almighty and merciful Lord loose us. Amen. So then it says three lessons are given. And it gives the antiphon for each lesson. So the lessons are from normally from Scripture. So I am going to jump to the season. And the season here is uh, Advent. That's where I'm going to find the lessons. So the Scripture's relevant to Advent. 
for these three lessons. So I see, and it tells me this is called an Ember Saturday. So again, that's an example of uh, being a more traditional breviary. Typically, you're not going to run across, you know, in modern translations, something called, well, this week there's Ember Friday and Ember Saturday. So it says the lesson from the Gospel according to St. Luke. So lesson one, chapter three, one through six. Then there's given a homily by St. Gregory the Great. I guess I should give you an example of that then. The date at which the forerunner of our Redeemer took up his office is indicated by the mention of the ruler of the Roman state and of those of the Judean regions. John came to preach. Him who was to bring redemption to some of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. And therefore his preaching is dated by the mention of the Gentile ruler and the governors of the Jews. This description of territories and dominions indicates that the Gentiles were going to be gathered together and the Jews scattered because of their guilt and treachery. One ruler of the Roman state is mentioned and the kingdom of the Jews is described as split upon into four with rulers over each part. So then there's a response for being a versicle. Then there's lesson two, which just continues. Um, By the voice of our Redeemer, it is said, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. It is clear that the end of the kingdom of the Jews is at hand when it is divided and subject to so many rulers. Fittingly, the names of the high priests as well as the rulers are given. He whom John the Baptist preached was both the king and the high priest who was to come. St. Luke the Evangelist fixes the date of his preaching by both rulers and priests. So then there's another response for versicle. What's that? All right. Behold the root of Jesse that shall rise to bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. To him shall the Gentiles trust, and his name shall be blessed forever. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. To him shall the Gentiles seek. So then there's lesson three, which continues on with that, with its response to and versicle. Of course, between each of those three lessons was the uh, antiphon that I received back in the absolution section. So the three antiphons, what were they? So I'll just read them out of order then. Not, I didn't read them before each of their lessons, did I? So number one, may he bless us who liveth and reigneth forever and ever. Amen. And then before that second lesson would have been, may the divine assistance remain with us always. Amen. For the third lesson, the antiphon was, may the king of angels bring us to the society of the heavenly citizens. Amen. So, I've done that. Now what happens? I cut, get up to Nocturne 2. And so I'll just say the Psalms. that They each have their own antiphon, of course. And you normally would say the glory be at the end of each one. So, there's Psalm 106, which is a long one, so it has a division. Psalm 107, a long one, so it has a division. And Psalm 108, 109. So that's a, you know, this, again, this is a long office. If you just did this one office every day, I think you'd probably be all set. Along with praying your rosary and maybe reading through your Bible, you know, every two years, would be great. So then we have, uh, um, Okay, well, I mean, obviously going to Mass every week, right? You can't just skip Mass because you feel like it. You know, I used to do that as a Protestant. It's like, eh, I can get a good sermon on YouTube. I'll do that. And, of course, then that became quite popular after the COVID martial law lockdowns illegally done by the governors, right? With uh, churches falling in line with it perfectly happily. First time to not be having Easter Mass around the world. Isn't that strange? 
Well, anyway, after that, sure. You know, before that, I was just like, yeah, why go to church? I mean, I can read my Bible at home. I can watch a good sermon on YouTube. Um, I'll stay in touch with friends. and Yeah, actually, I still fellowship. I mean, I meet a, I meet a coffee shop. There you go. That's fellowship. So I'm good. <laughs> but then once I became Catholic, it's like, no, you have to go to Mass every week. Unless you have a good reason. You know, I mean, you're, really, you're sick or whatever. Like, seriously. Not because you want to go golfing. Any of that garbage. Right? It's the Lord's Day. And if you don't go, you go to confession before you go to Mass the next time. And, you know, you do that, uh, that's actually a mortal sin. You're told not to forsake the assembling. And so I needed that kind of help. Oh, I don't want to be Catholic. There's so many rules. Wow, I thank God for those rules because they really helped me. Because, um, you know, I'm obviously still kind of fat and lazy physically, but at least less so spiritually. <laughs> so... Uh, it was very helpful to me. And so it's a thing like this, a breviary, daily praying the rosary, going to confession, confess your sins one to another. Yeah, how many Protestants do that? Right? And what does it matter if you did? I mean, um, you know, when, when you go to a priest and you pray and think ahead of time and you go to a confession and you receive absolution, uh, yeah, that's really powerful. Very releasing. I certainly know that experientially for myself many times. Uh, as, you know, I'm, oh, you just go to Christ. Well, I am going to Christ. The priest is, uh, you know, representing Christ. So I am, I am giving my, confessing my sins to the priest representing the church uh, and Jesus. So, yes, I am. Do I still periodically confess my sins in mental prayer? You know, just impromptu praying? Yes, I do. But then follow that up with confession and you have quite the release. Uh, save the money on your therapist. Save the money on your psychotropic drugs. Well, that could still have its place, I guess. But um, yeah, this is powerful stuff I'm talking about. And I know it experientially. Same thing with having to go to Mass every Sunday. Well, yeah, as a Catholic, yeah, I need to do that. Because you know what? I'm not going to make up on YouTube. I'm not going to make up with meeting with a friend at a coffee shop to have our fellowship. You know what that is? The body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. There's no making up for that. No, you don't just receive that spiritually. We're not Gnostics. It's the physical. Just like the bells, the organ, the incense, the statues, stained glass windows, the altar that you actually kneel at. Yeah, Catholicism is real physical. Let's get physical, physical. Uh-huh. That's physical, all right. It's not Gnostic. Who you are as a person, God made you a spirit body together, all right? You're not some spirit trapped in a body. We're not Gnostics. We're not Gnostics. So... There's, you know, some other great help. Going to Mass, receiving the Eucharist. Well, anyway, this is part of that. This is structure. Is this structure? Uh-huh. See, it's got Benedict's name on there. So, over a thousand years ago. And before that, you know, the, there's this tradition of praying the Psalms. I mean, the Jews did it, right? 1,500 years before Jesus. So, we're standing on the shoulder of giants. Um, yes, this is structured. Yes, I'm explaining a structure. Yes, that'll take a little discipline. You discipline yourself to learn your computer program, right? But what? Your spiritual life isn't worth a little thinking, a little discipline, a little trying? Why? So, yeah, the discipline and the structure being put together over thousands of years. Yeah, I'm not above that. I need the help. Thank you very much. The Church of Christ, the Catholic Church, appreciate the help. Appreciate the councils. I appreciate ratifying the scriptures. <clears throat> so, what do we have next? Uh, comes the, uh, let's see, the um, 
final antiphon to wrap up this office of uh, matins. So I go to the one, what season are we in? So I'm in um, Advent. So I look for that and pray that. I've prayed it on a couple other videos, so I guess I won't. And then, um, so I end, you know, the prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who by the cooperation of the Holy Ghost didst prepare the body and the soul of the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of Mary to become a habitation meet for thy Son, grant that we rejoice in her commemoration. We may be delivered by her loving intercession from the present evils and from eternal death through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And so after that, there's the, let's see, may the divine help remain with us always and with our absent brothers. Amen. So that's what this looks like. Monastic Breviary, Matins, the big office. Over and out.